Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting, um, working on the theory videos for chapter two, which is for analyzing and recording business transactions. And this is the eighth video in the series. And we left off talking about the trial balance. Um, and the next section um, is going to deal with the financial statements. So um, what, I, uh, let me get here, get to the right slide here. Okay, so, um, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to end up discussing whether it's over the course of one, two, or three videos, I'm going to end up discussing, a, you know, how the formatting of the income statement should occur, the statement of retained earnings, and the balance sheet. And I'm also going to show the relationship between these financial statements, okay? Um, as a quick aside, if you're doing the graded project, you know, Pay attention to these uh, formats because this is the way, um, you know, this is somewhat the way uh, you're going to have to create your uh, financial statements, all right? Formatting is important, and if you watched the last video, you heard me discuss about the legal liabilities, okay? So let me just take, I want to take a quick look at uh, what I got going. Okay, good. All right, so. When we create financial statements, um, what we're doing is we're taking the information off of our trial balance. Okay, remember our trial balance is nothing more than a listing of the accounts and the balances in those accounts. So we're taking this information off of the trial balance and we're creating our financial statements. Now, the very first one that we have to create is an income statement. And the reason why we create the income statement is because we have our revenues less our expenses, which gives us our profit or loss. Okay. That profit or loss goes on our statement of, of retained earnings. So your first one that you create is the income statement, and the second one that you create is the statement of retained earnings. Why? Because I can't create the statement of retained earnings unless I have the profit or loss. In this case here, the net income. Okay, so by using utilizing that information, that's going to allow me to know what the ending balance of my retained earnings account is for that accounting period. Well, that information then comes down and gets put onto my balance sheet. Okay, so the third statement that I create is the balance sheet. I can't just automatically start out with the balance, trying to create the balance sheet because cash is an asset and it's the first account on my trial balance, right? You know, you don't just go down through the list of accounts here and start to try to create financial statements. Yeah, cash is an asset, accounts receivable, these are all assets. You know, these two are liabilities, these are equity, this is a, you know, my revenue account, and these three are my expense account. You don't just automatically start creating and only use this information you know as you saw yeah I could take my revenues and expenses um, right off the bat and create the income statement but I need that information to be able to calculate my statement of retained earnings notice I said calculate okay the statement of retained earnings I can't start with the balance sheet because I don't know what my ending retained earnings is going to be Okay. I need to get that from my statement of retained earnings, and I can't create the statement of retained earnings because my net income, I don't know what that is, right, until I've created the income statement. So you create them in that order, one, two, and three. Now, let's go on, and, and so I hope you understand that relationship. If not, you know, feel free to, you know, watch the video again or, or contact an instructor. But I'm going to move on now and talk about how to create the financial statements and um, the formatting of them. Okay, if you've watched the um, uh, theory videos, okay, you know that I kind of go through a process, a repeatable process. You know, it's a it's a process that allows flexibility. Okay, and the reason why it allows flexibility is because you know, no two businesses are alike. But if I follow the process, 
I'm able to format the financial statements and be able to put the information where it needs to be and my formatting will be correct. So for the income statement, uh, you know, all financial statements have a heading and they're all center aligned. Okay. And you put the name, you put the title of the, uh, the financial statement, and then you're going to have a heading date. Now, most people, you know, center align it. They write the name of the, the business. They write the financial uh, statement that, you know, this is for, but they get the heading wrong. Right? The reason why they get the heading wrong is because the balance sheet, right, is as of a specific date. And you've heard me say this before, if you've been watching more than one video. The balance sheet is as of a specific date, the same as the trial balance was. Your income statement and your statement of retained earnings are for a period in time, whatever the accounting period is. Okay. So what will happen is on the income statement, student, some students will just put January 31st, 2014. Well, that's wrong because it's, you know, uh, that's connotating that um, this here is from the, you know, the balances in these accounts are from the uh, when the business first got started. When in reality, the income statement is, you know, for a period of time, it shows the operation of the business for a specific accounting period. So you can either write it for the month end, and month can be whatever the accounting period is, whether it's four weeks. If it was for four weeks, you'd have to write, um, you would end up writing. If the accounting period was for four weeks, for the four weeks ended, or ending, you know, and then January 31st, okay? If it's quarterly, okay, you would have to make it, you know, quarter ended or for the quarter ending, okay? Um, if it's yearly, you know, for the year ended or for the year ending, all right? You have to show the accounting, you know, the, the period of time when it comes to the income statement and the statement of retained earnings. Now, when I'm creating the financial statement, the first thing I do is I create the heading. Okay. And the second thing I do is I write the word revenue and I write the word expenses because those are categories of accounts. Right. Now you don't know what you're, if you're going to have a profit or loss at this point in time. Okay. Yeah, you can take a guesstimate and if you're your revenues are much, much greater than your expenses. You can write down net income here, all right? If your expenses are greater than your revenues, then you'd end up writing net loss because, you know, you've spent more than you've taken in, right? But I, when I'm formatting the uh, income statement, I write revenues and then expenses. Notice that they're left aligned, okay? They're all aligned all the way to the left. After I write revenues and expenses, then I start writing in the ledger accounts, okay? And I indent the ledger accounts, okay? The reason why is because you notice I have a total uh, total expense here, right? Okay. And since I only have one account for service revenue, I don't have to write total revenues because all I would be doing is um, just rewriting the same information. So if you only have one account, you don't need to write you know, the total, but if you have more than one account, you should write, you know, total revenues or total expenses. That would be the fourth thing that I would put in, right? I would write in those accounts and I would, you know, indent those accounts, okay? The fifth thing I would do is now I'm going to put the balances in the accounts. And remember, when you're going to have the first number in the column, it should have a dollar amount to designate dollars, not decimals. Right? Since I only have one account here, okay, and it's a revenue account, I want to put that in the rightmost column. I'm going to call this the rightmost and the leftmost. Okay? Since I only have the one account, 
I write that amount in the rightmost column because I don't have a mathematical calculation to perform. I know that my total revenue is 3100 because I only have one account and that's how much is in it. Okay? But when it comes to expenses, I have more than one expense account. And I'm going to want to know what the, those totals are. So I have to do a mathematical calculation. And when I do that, I'm going to write those numbers in the leftmost column. Okay. What does that allow me to do? All right. Well, I'm going to add these numbers up. So I put an underline underneath it which represents a mathematical calculation and I write the summation of it in the rightmost column whatever the total amount of that calculation is I put it in the rightmost column okay now by putting it in the rightmost column notice what I've done on your income statement we say we know we have revenues less expenses gives us a profit or loss. Well, what do I have in this right-hand column? Revenue and I have expenses, okay? Theoretically, I could put all of these numbers in the right-hand column, but now what happens is it forces the person who's reading the financial statements to really think about what they're looking at versus um, being able to read it rather easily, okay? When I'm looking at it in this format, whenever I have a mathem mathematical calculation, I always go one column to the left and put the sum in the next right hand column right this allows me to be able to distinguish you know determine what I'm, I'm adding up let's say for example you know for utilities I'd had let's say a gas expense and a water expense okay well if I had these two additional accounts I would indent right because I want to know what the total of the ex uh, utilities expense would be and then I would write total utilities expense, and then I'd have a total amount. So let's say gas was a thousand, and the water is three thousand. Uh, three thousand. Well, I would draw an underline and write that in the second most column, which would be in this case here. I'm just going to use the number two hundred, right, instead of four thousand. But you get the point that I'm trying to make here. Okay, that I would have actually let me just use say fifty and one hundred and fifty instead. Okay, if this was say gas and this was water, okay, um, I would draw an underline and I'd put the right, uh, put the total in the rightmost column. So this way I can look down and say, okay, I know I'm looking at utilities and I know that's the total amount. And when I know when I'm adding all of those up, that gives me my total expenses. And this is all controlled by your descriptions that you're using and the the, the columns that you're using, okay. So, I know that it became a little convoluted, but let me um, show it in a little bit different manner here. So I have my expenses here, and then I have rent, and I'm abbreviating here, and then I have salaries. Okay. Now let's say for utilities. Okay. I notice I indented here. Okay. Now for utilities, let's say I have gas, and I have water. Okay. Well then I'm going to want to have my total utilities expense here okay so if i'm notice that i indented here why because it's subtotal of the utilities right and then here i have my total expenses right so in this here this is the rightmost column where i have 3100 for revenues okay now for my rent expense i have 900 and i have 600 for salaries Okay. Now for the utility, right? I have 50 and 150. Okay. I'm drawing an underline, and since that's a calculation for my total utilities, I'm going to put the 200 here in the the right-hand column. Okay. You see how that worked? Okay. Now I do an underline, and I'm going to write the total here, which is 1,700. And then I can draw the line and do the math and get 1,400 as my uh, my total my net income right and I don't have space down here for the net income but anyway 
you, you see the, the difference here? I ended up using three columns instead of two because I have one additional mathematical calculation here in order to determine what my total utilities are. So that anybody who looks, they can say, okay, well, how much were the total, ut total utilities? Ah, 200. But if they wanted to know what the makeup of it was, oh, it's 50 and 150 to gas and water. And that's why we keep using, you know, the one more, you know, it, whenever we have a mathematical calculation, we go one column to the left to be able to um, see, you know, what makes up those specific numbers, okay? And that also allows us to analyze the information differently, okay? Um, you know, because now, instead of just having a total utility, I, I can look at my gas expenditures and I can look at my water expenditures and be able to make financial decisions based upon that. If all I had was utility expense like I have here, oops, like I have here, and in that utility expense I have my gas and my water and electric, let's say. Now if I wanted to do some kind of analysis for electric, right, I have to go through all of the entries for the utility expense to determine which ones were for electric in order to be able to make a financial decision about my electric bills. Okay, but if I had the separate, the additional accounts, then I would, uh, it'd be a lot easier for me to be able to do that analysis. But if I had these extra accounts, then my uh, income statement would, you know, would start to look something like this, right? So that's just getting a little bit, um, you know, a little bit more detailed, okay? Um, but I'm, you know, this is theory, and I'm not expecting everybody to take everything in the first time around. I mean, you know, I presented the same information in previous videos, but repetition is the mother of learning and seeing it, seeing it again and again and again, and it being introduced to a new thought that, you know, a new idea, a new concept that comes in a later chapter. When you get to that later chapter, you'll recognize it and, and understand where it's coming from instead of, you know, you'll be able to associate it much, much better. Okay. So, um, here for the income statement, formatting, okay? Um, the first thing was I create the heading. Remember, I'll have the, the name of the business, the financial statement that's that you're creating, and the heading um, date, okay? Then I write in revenues and expenses. Then I list the accounts, and then I write in the amounts. And if I have a mathematical calculation, I underline write the balance in the rightmost column. Since this is the rightmost column and I can't, I'm not going to add any more, I draw an underline because that's my mathematical calculation for this column. I can see that it's 3100 less 1700 to give me my balance of 1400. And since that's the end of the calculation, I draw a double underline. Remember, double underline represents the end of a calculation and I write the dollar sign showing that that's what that, you know, that's for. It's a dollar amount, not a decimal amount. Okay. And because now I know that I have a net income because my revenues are greater than my expenses, I can write in the work, write in the description net income and notice that that is left aligned. Okay. All right. So um, I hope that made sense. Okay. Um, and I hope that you're starting to see the structure here, okay? Because I write revenues and expenses, I can add in accounts here in the expenses. I can add in accounts here in the revenue. And depending upon how I'm going to add it up, I'll end up using additional columns if I have to. But at this level, to be honest with you, don't get so bent out of shape over using additional columns. For the most part right now, we're only going to use two columns, but remember, if you're going to do math, left-hand column, put the total in the right, okay? And the last thing before we stop the video here is, remember, this $1,400 net income is going to go over here on our statement of retained earnings, which is what we're going to cover in the next video. So just, uh, you know, if you're... Uh, you know, if you're watching these videos through, okay, we took the information off of this trial balance, okay, and we took our revenues and our expense accounts right here, okay, we took those accounts and we created our income statement here, okay, and when we have this net income 
uh, amount or this profit or loss, we'll be putting that on the statement of retained earnings, which is in the next video. All right, so pause and rewind the video and watch it again. Okay, and if you still have any other questions, feel free to uh, telephone and speak with an instructor.